constantly hearing. Let's get a classic tone. Make it sound like 1959. Make it, you know, like in the old days. What happens if you want something modern and a PAF is just not cutting it for you? You do what my boy Mike Martin from the mighty All That Remains does. And, you know, put EMGs in your PRS. Now this one doesn't have EMGs in it because, well, you know, I, I'm i not a PRS endorsed artist like Mike Martin. If I were to actually put EMGs in this guitar, people would probably kill me. I also don't play in a platinum selling heavy metal band. Although I do have to say thank you to my boy Mike Martin and all the guys and all that remains and my fallen brother, Ollie Herbert, for uh, putting me on this song, The Thunder Rolls, where I play piano and arrange some strings. That's a gold record. Thank you, All That Remains. I really appreciate it. So I recently dropped by the All That Remains layer and talked with my boy Mike. You know, the right hand behind the riffs. He played me some of the new record featuring Jason Richardson. Because for those that don't know, our dear, dear friend Ollie Herbert was taken from this world. He was a bandmate of mine in Lost Symphony. One of the reasons I was actually on that song. And the last record that All That Remains did was with Ollie. And since then, the incredible virtuoso savant that is Jason Richardson has stepped up to the plate and taken over. And well, Mike played me some of this new music and I gotta tell you, I hope there's tabs because I can't play that. And it was, uh, so if you're an All That Remains fan, as you should be, you're gonna be psyched. Mike wanted to show me some of his guitars. And for those that don't know, Mike is a huge, Huge Paul Reed Smith and Dorsey. He loves his hardtail custom 24s, but he also loves his EMGs. Time to call the pickup police. Take it away, Mike. Well, no, it's funny because like, there's sometimes like I'm very specific about the specs, and then sometimes I'm just like, <sighs> you know, back in the old days when I first got my first endorsements, it was like, was especially with Washburn, they were like, let's spec out a guitar together. Let's, this is gonna be amazing. Can, can I get a, a yellow one I mean, <laughs> that was pretty much it i remember the dude like kind of like running down the spec sheet with me and i felt bad because i was in like this professional band and the guy's like yeah you know we'll do these abalone inlays and like in this binding and this blah 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 and i'm like I don't, I don't know what any of that means but um can i get a blue one the beginning of me specking out guitars was pretty sad it was basically like the color and then i'm good this is my first custom 24 from prs that they made specifically for me. After working with PRS for, God, I started in 2009 and they gave me a couple just stock guitars that they had. So this was the first time actually in 2015 where I said, all I really need is a custom 24 and can you just tweak a couple little things because the guitar is just about perfect for me. And I was talking to Beverly from PRS at the time and she was like, yeah, what do you need? And it was just, it was literally just give me the custom 24. Can I put a three-way toggle on it? Because at the time I had those five-way rotaries and those drove me nuts. The biggest thing was the bridge. You know, I did, I did not want a tremolo. So this is an artist top. So okay. what is it, what does it go, what's the order? It's 10 top, wood library, artist, then private stock. Just give me the scuff neck, give me a hardtail bridge, three-way toggle, and then I, you know, I use EMGs, which here come the pickup police. I play in a band with 99% high gain stuff. And EMGs to me have always sounded great with high gain music. So you take a lot of these guitars, whether it's a PRS, whether it's a Les Paul, guitars that a lot of dentists and lawyers buy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You post it on the internet, you see the EMGs in there, here come the pickup police. It's typically people that have never left the bedroom or played a show ever, which is fine, you're entitled to your opinion, but EMGs sound awesome if you play in a metal band. Is that f thing up? It might. <laughs> it might now. I've been using EMGs ever since I think I had an LTD EC1000 back in like 2003. I like the way they sound with the 5150. I was using PV 5150s forever, then EVH. The EMG guitar with a 5150, you can't really go wrong if you're playing metal. It works, but you know, you get, you get into higher end guitars, people are gonna have stronger opinions about what pickups you have in them because apparently having a vintage tone or having a guitar sound like it's 1959 is super important to them. It's not to me because it's not 1959, I'm playing in a metal band, so I don't want a vintage tone. I want a high gain, good metal tone. Certain Paul Reed Smith pickups, they, ha they have a metal pickup, which I think sounds great. I have one or two guitars with them and uh, it sounds really good, but I don't know, there's a certain level of just doing something for 10 or 15 years where you just kind of really get stuck in your ways and you get older, you like change less. I'm definitely one of those dudes that gets stuck in my ways, so. With your PRS and your EMGs. Yeah. Tremolos to me are the literal worst invention 
of all time for the guitar. <laughs> if I'm playing a show, I don't want to need five wrenches. I don't want to tune four different spots. I don't want the weather to make my bridge fall a certain way. The PRS tremolo is actually as, as rock solid as it gets, but once you start getting into Floyd Rose and stuff like that, it's just too high maintenance. At first you're touring, you don't have a guitar tech. You know, you're on the road, you're in a van, you don't have a tech. You're not, you're not handing a guitar to a guy every day going, here, fix this. I've played blizzards in Denver, and then the next day, it was 90 in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Guitars hate that. It's fine, you do what you can. The Floyd Rose or any other kind of tremolo is going to complicate that as far as my experience goes. So <laughs> PRS in general, from what I've noticed over the last 20 years of touring has been with all the weather changes, no matter what, most of the time this guitar doesn't need anything it's the most stable thing I've ever had, and especially airports, because you've seen what TSA does to your guitar cases. They do not care. So airports, weather changes, whatever. This guitar is usually still in tune when I take it out of the case. No headstocks are getting chopped off. It's amazing. The most stable thing I've ever played in my life, especially this one specifically. I think the bridge has a lot to do with it. I think PRS is consistency in general. You hear people literally complain that PRS is so consistent that they don't feel anything when they play them sometimes. I would never complain about that. I've bought PRSs before at shops without playing them. That have been five, six thousand dollars because I'm just like, I know it's gonna be great. Why don't you smash that subscribe button already?